Hi, welcome to ROS Control 101 Unit 3, Configuring the Controllers. So let's quickly head over to our course outline to look at what we are doing here. Uh, but before we start, um, from this topic, Configuring the Controllers, we are referring to one thing, the controllers. So the question comes, which controllers and what do they do? So the controllers we are talking about here are the ones we talked about in the previous video in this series. That's the one for you need two basic concepts. That video can be found at this link in case you want to have a quick recap of what these things are. But quickly we look, we looked at these four type of controllers, effort controllers, position controllers, velocity controllers, and joint state controllers. All these controllers are controllers that are also used to send commands to the joints of our robots in order for, for them to do certain things. For example, joint state controllers are controllers that tell us what, what is the current state of the robot's joints. Meaning that, okay, for the neck joints, the, 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 the neck will be bent, so the joint state controllers tell us that state. Now, uh, that takes us to the next question, what do they do? Now, ROS controllers help us in controlling our robots by interfacing with actuators and joints of our robots. Know these two words, um, we are coming to them later on. So, but let's remember, the aim of control is to make our robots do things, like drawing that beautiful picture we just saw. Uh, and for our robots to do things, they need to use their joints, just like human beings. Human beings move, we, we, we want to dance, uh, we use several joints to, to accomplish that. We want to open the door, we use several joints to accomplish that. So similarly for robots, they use several joints to accomplish whatever they need to do. But the difference in this case is that we are the ones sending commands to the robots to know how to use their joints. <laughs> of course, they are not, they are not autonomous and intelligent like human beings. So they need to be told what to do. And for this reason, we are look, looking at loss control as a tool to help us do that. Now, the actuators actuat actuat we are mentioned, we, we are referring to here are motors that help us move the robot joints. And they, they move the robot's joints by receiving and responding to signals. Obviously, these signals are coming from ROS controllers that tell our robots what to do with these joints. But they don't talk to the joints just like that. They send control signals to the actuators, which in turn control the robots. Now, specifically for this video, we, we, we want to see how to configure our robots in order for ROS control packages to be able to control them. Now, we know that ROS control pack packages help us to control our robots, but they need certain things to be in place. And here, we are going to look at some sample URDL files to see how this can be done. So by the way, what is URDL? So that's Unified Robot Description Format, which is a format we use for to describe our robots. So basically, the ROS control packages need to know certain things about our robots in order for them to work. So, and um, specifically for this video, we'll be looking at certain one of those things, which is transmissions. So there are a number of things that need to be configured for ROS control packages to work. But here, we are looking at configuring transmissions um, in the URDL files. Again, we want to ask, what are transmissions? So now, transmission elements are used to describe the relationship between a joint and an actuator. Okay, so let's take a step back and look at, again at the, at the definition of ROS controllers. We said the interface with the actuators and joint of our robots. And here, transmission elements describe the relationship between a joint and an actuator. You know, the actuators talk to the joints but they need to have a relationship to do that. Okay. Finally, we are, we talk about, about hardware interfaces. So, which we described that the software representation of our robots, um, they basically help us to talk with our robots in just the same way 
at Android, iOS, Windows, help us communicate with mobile phones. So great. Now let's head over to our simulation screen to take the example and see how example URDF file looks like. So we run this command to change the directory to where we copy the file. Yes. Okay. So we are there now. So we go ahead and copy the file. Great. You can see from this window that the file we are trying to copy has appeared. So we open up the file by double clicking on it. Um, opening. Let's do that again. Something is wrong. Okay, great. So we have the file open. Um, let's enlarge it a little bit by coming here. All right. We have more strings. We are we are interested in certain parts of this file. Don't forget we are talking about transmission. And um, let's go down. Um, let's find. Use here. So we want to find um, transmission. Okay. So here we have. Two transmissions defined. So we have first one, tran one, and then there are three main parts. This transmissions. So first is the type, and we have transmission interface, simple transmission. So we have the joint here that is being referenced. And the name is joint one. And we have the hardware interface for, for this joint. Um, in the previous video, we talked about hardware interfaces, which help us to talk to the robots. So the hardware, the hardware interface understands the robots and understand, understands us. So it helps us to interface with the robots. We can talk to the robots and the robot can understand what we are saying. So for this, we are using an effort joint interface. So, and um, we have a second type. So finally, sorry, we have the actuator for this one, whose name is motor one. Don't forget that actuators are actually motors that help us move the joint and they receive control signals to, to do that. So we also have an hardware interface here which is also an effort joint insert interface. And then we have a mechanical reduction value, which is one, usually one. Again, we have a second transmission here defined as trans2, also using the simple transmission interface type. And um, we have the joint as joint2, another joint, and we have another actuator which is motor 2, also using the effort joint interface. So basically, we now for this to be defined, the joint must already be defined in the file. And for this, we can look at how the joint is described. Joint 1. Ah, okay. So we see the definition for the joint here. So parent length, child length, and origin and other things. Okay, we also look at joint two. Does it exist? Yes, it does. Joint two type continuous parent child origin and all the other ones. So, like we said, we looked at the transmissions and it has three types, three tags type joint and actuator and these are the kind of things we've looked at in the past 
he said that each, each of the joint and actuators are using a certain hardware interface, which are effort joint interface. Okay, so that's all for this course. Again, um, thank you for your time for this course. I'll see you in the next course.